Come on in, welcome to my home. Today, I am testing out five dessert recipes because Kelly, over in my Patreon, asked for some dessert recipes. And these are easy dessert recipes that you can make on a weekend. We'll get to that, so put a pin in that. I'm going to tell you that all of the recipes are linked down below in the description. I did have to make some slight modifications because of the ingredients that I had on hand. And I'm also going to tell you that because it decided to suddenly turn in the 90s, that uh, the last recipe was slightly rushed because, I don't know if you can tell it right now, but it's hot in here. It's really hot. So yeah, the, um, the one thing I will tell you is that all of these recipes do work. They work as written, they are wonderful, but I do have a favorite. And let's talk about this for just a second. One of the things that we do know for a fact is that people are eating less desserts. And there are a lot of factors going into this, but I think one of the, well, I think there are two major factors going into it. One is money. It does take some money to make dessert or buy dessert. The other is time. It really does take some time to make desserts. But on that, let's start with our first dessert, which is two ingredient peanut butter fudge. So I will tell you on the surface of it, two ingredient peanut butter fudge is easy. I mean, it's really easy. One of the things that I like about it is the fact that you can decide what the two ingredients are. You can choose, um, well, of course, one has to be almond bark, but the other, or white chocolate bark, you know, it's listed in the uh, recipe that I get linked to. But the other, you can decide what kind of peanut butter. You can go with a natural peanut butter. You can go with a, a store brand peanut butter. That doesn't matter. What does matter is time. Yeah. Okay, so the simple part about this is, and this is where it's really easy, you just basically melt the... Uh, bark, and then add the peanut butter to it. Make sure that that melts. That has to be one of the big things. Once it does, you pour it into a uh, plastic wrap lined pan and let it cool and cut it into pieces. And I am here to tell you that I personally thought it just tastes sweet. Mom thought it tasted really good and tasted like peanut butter. She said it was really good. I said it just tasted sweet. So I'm going to say that yes, it does work. Um, but I would say it's sweet. It's really sweet. Is it worth making? Sure it is. Now let's go for the other one, which is thrown in here because we needed it later. Now, what it is, is we are talking about chocolate waffles. These are relatively easy to make, and these are one of those things that I would make over the weekend, and that way you can have them, and you can literally make them just like make them, toast them up, and you can use them as chocolate waffles. They make a great dessert, a stack of chocolate waffles. Okay, one or two chocolate waffles. You can put maple syrup on them, you can do whatever you want with them, but it really is easy, everything from mixing up your dry ingredients, to mixing your wet ingredients. Now, this is where it's really interesting. Any of the changes that I made in the ingredients, which will not affect the recipe overall, the making of the recipe, it just slightly affects the taste, is listed in my Patreon. Uh, if you're interested in joining Patreon, it's a great place for, I mean, like I said, this, this whole idea for this video came from the wonderful people over at Patreon. So this is a recipe that works really well. And when it was done, you get a wonderful chocolate waffle. You could even have these for breakfast. It wouldn't have to be a dessert thing. Make them ahead. They are great. So you're asking yourself probably, well, why on earth did you make chocolate waffles. Well, that's the cool part. When I first originally saw this recipe for an ice cream sandwich, it called for just using regular waffles and ice cream to make your ice cream sandwich. And of course, I'm like, well, no, 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 no. So I was thinking, you know, ice cream sandwiches usually have a chocolate layer, a chocolate, like, cookie kind of thing, cake kind of thing with ice cream and then uh, another one on top. So I decided to use the chocolate waffle as my two layers of the cake slash cookie thing and put the ice cream in between the two. And you want to know something? 
it works really well. I mean, like, unbelievably well. This is so cool because the chocolate waffle has this crispy thing to it. Now, you could use the chocolate waffle, uh, like, room temperature. You could use it uh, still sort of warm. Your ice cream will melt faster that way. Or you could use it, uh, like, straight from the, straight from the toaster. I did mine in just a quarter because it was really easy, but oh my gosh, this is so good, so easy to make, and I was just like, this is brilliant. So if you already have your waffles made, you can do that because you could then just put, I don't know, like maple syrup on them or whatever you wanted, but this is so cool, and I was like, this one is a really good dessert. My next one is something which I should have thought of myself, which is a root beer float. Yes, a root beer float. You can make your own root beer float. In fact, you don't even have to use root beer. I just used A&W root beer with my favorite ice cream. You can use whatever ice cream that you want. My ice cream that I had, which is extra creamy, stayed soft, which made it easy to do the ice cream sandwich because the ice cream was already soft, straight out of the freezer. And when I did the root beer float, which like I said, the recipes are linked down below, just those scoops of ice cream and root beer. Oh, it was so good. I mean, we were talking about it was really good, so easy to make, and it sort of, probably most of you don't remember the, the fact that there used to be uh, soda shops where root beer floats were quite common. It was a normal thing for people to have root beer floats. That creamy, fizzy, vanilla root beer taste, it's just absolutely amazing, really good, and it's just one of those moments that you're just like, hey, I like that. Then the last one is a simple, really simple, uh, it's just a white chocolate, I guess you'd just call it a white chocolate ball. I mean, this is easy to make, however, this is where I want to really stress about the why I think uh, why I think that dessert sort of went by the wayside. Because to make this, first you have to heat up your cream and your butter, and then make sure that your, your white chocolate chips melt. Then once it's all melted, you pour it into a bowl, put it into the ice, ice or the refrigerator, ice box. Probably most of you don't remember what an ice box is. Once it has set, you form it into balls and then roll it into I used pecans because I had them on hand. They suggested coconut or almonds. That's really fine. But some sort of nut. Make sure that it is firm when it sets. And there you go. You have it. It is sweet and good. But let's talk about realism, though, can we? All of these things sound great until... <laughs> You look at what's the aftermath. The aftermath is a lot of them take a lot of dishes, like a lot of dishes. You are going to be adding to the dishes that you're already using for dinner. And that's where suddenly it becomes a case of, do I really want to do this? So some people would go out and buy their desserts for dessert time, which is cool and wonderful, but that becomes expensive. One of the weirdest things that I heard or read was the fact that some people were saying, well, don't eat dessert because that way you can save those calories to eat healthy. Okay, if you want dessert, eat dessert. Eat dessert in moderation. It is up to you. But the idea of not eating dessert so you can then eat healthy is sort of like the same thing as eating dessert. Sure, they're not empty calories, but it's okay to have a dessert. It really is. You don't have to starve yourself. The thing about this is just eat in moderation, and you don't know what the other person is dealing with about their weight or anything. So making judgment calls on that is sort of pointless. But for those of you who don't make dessert, for those of you who are like, hmm, dessert should be really, really easy, it's no problem. Well, it kind of is. Like I said, when you have to be the one, you're the one who is deciding you know, I'm going to make this dessert and I have all these dishes to deal with. Is it really worth it? I mean, that's a lot of time. And when you factor in, sometimes you have firming time, like the peanut butter fudge, the uh, pedophores, which were the white chocolate balls. Uh, then you also have the cooking time of the waffles. You have the making time of the, uh, of not just the waffles, but you have the making time of the 
uh, ice cream sandwiches, that really is something to think about. It is something bizarre that you have to wonder, you know, do I have time to do this? I do have an overall winner, and my overall winner is the root beer float. The root beer float is my overall winner simply because it was the easiest. It was going to be the one which had the least amount of cleanup, the least amount of like just about everything. All I had to clean up was the ice cream scoop and then the glass and the straw. You wouldn't actually have to have a straw, but those things aren't that bad. Everything else did have some too significant cleanup. And the two, the two ingredient peanut butter fudge, I could have gotten a silicone pan which would then mean that I wouldn't have had to use the plastic wrap, but I didn't have one, so plastic wrap was what it had to be. But it was one of those things which is so easy, it is so simple to make, and so quick, that root beer floats win. Hands down win for the easiest of the five. But there are lots of other desserts that you can try, lots of other desserts that you can do. I would love to hear down in the comments what your favorite easy weeknight dessert is. These are mine. If you have any questions or ideas for videos, let me know down in the comments. At this time, I'd like to take these, thank, I'd like to take the time to thank these wonderful people over on Patreon who help me make these videos. They suggest ideas and they support this channel because without them, none of this would happen. Like, none of this. It is so much fun to go over there and have discussions about what is happening in the videos. And also, this week I've started the whole going behind the scenes and going more in depth about everything which I've learned in these videos in the weekly vlog, which you get to see the behind the scenes of the weekly vlog. I hope you enjoyed this. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that, that way it lets the YouTube algorithm know that you like this and you want to see more videos like this. And I hope we get to see you the next time you stop by.